Thank you everyone for joining us for today's media availability with Forward IO Akinola. We will start with a question from Alex Morgan. Hi, uh, thanks for uh, joining us today. It's good to speak with you. This is Alex Morgan from uh, Quakes Epicenter. I don't think uh, uh, we've been on a press conference together uh, yet, but uh, it's nice to meet you and uh, welcome to, to San Jose. It's been a, a pleasure to watch you over these last few games. Um, I'm curious, you know, as you're getting adjusted to, to this new role with the Quakes, you know, you, you've been subbed on now multiple times in late game situations, you know, either pushing for a, 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 a result or trying to protect a lead. Um, what is the kind of second half strategy uh, that, that Lucci is sending you out with? What, how would you define your role and, and, and how is that different from maybe some of the, the roles you've played on, on other teams in the past? Um, I don't think there's like a defined role. I think it just depends on how the game is being played and uh, just the scenario and, and the situation of what, of what the game uh, gives to us. You know, for like Tigres, for example, like we're trying to push a goal. So that's why we played two up top. So like just to see if we can get a goal just to tie it up. But in a situation where against Vancouver, it was late in the game. You know, we had like five, six minutes left. Um and like just ma basically like bunkering and just trying to prevent a goal. Um, not necessarily trying to go and attack, but just trying to keep the lead, you know, just trying to add uh, fresh legs and bodies. So I think it just depends on the situation of and the scenario of, of how the game is being played out in the second half. And then to, to follow up on that, um, you mentioned the two at the top uh, against Tigres uh, that we saw, um, you know, that's not, a formation, a shape that, that the Quakes have played uh, in the, the recent past. That, that two strikers is new. So I'm curious what the, the process uh, was like uh, in training. Was that something that you guys were experiencing with, preparing for? Was that something that kind of got thrown together at the, the last minute? Uh, and, and, you know, how, how, how you guys have been thinking about, you know, the two at the top situation? Um, no, I, I, yeah, of course that's not what we, uh, we play primarily. I think... And sometimes in training we do do a version of two up top, but but the main focus is just uh, three up top where w with the one striker. I think it was just in that situation against T Res where it was just you know just trying to push a goal because we knew that if we lost this game we were going to be out. You know what I mean? So I think it was just you know just throwing everything up at front and just trying to get a goal. So I think it was just a scenario where. That, that game specifically where we just needed just bodies forward, so that's why we just played two up top. Got it. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Fabian Rankel. Hey, Ayo. My name is uh, Fabian Rankel. Um, I cover the Quakes all the time, so nice to meet you. Thanks for taking the time. So a couple of fans have been telling me that you're quickly becoming a fan favorite. Everybody says that you're pretty grateful to be here, and they love the energy that you kind of give to the fan base. Is that something that has always been a part of you, or do you feel like this is something that, uh, you know, it's just coming to you now because of the situation? But it seems like uh, you're pretty, you're a pretty happy person and grateful person. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm a very humble person, but also grateful for the opportunity. You know what I mean? And I always like to show love to the people, no matter what. Um, I think that's just been, that was just always instilled in me. You know, especially for my mom. Um, to always be grateful of the situation that pre that is presented to you. So I always take that to the chin. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, when just the appearance that we had last week where with the fans, the season ticket holders came out, you know, just showing love to the kids, showing love to the parents, you know, oh, thanking them for coming out to the games, you know, even though I've been here for such a little time, but always being appreciative of what's in front of me. And, you know, n nothing beats a when fans support you and they always have your back. So I just try to reciprocate that same energy. Thank you. And if you don't mind me asking a second question, um, what is it like coming to a team where you have an MLS MVP candidate in Christian Espinoza and a very prolific goal scorer in Jeremy Bobasi? Are you grabbing anything from them in trainings? And um, how has the relationship been with becoming a part of this offensive unit? Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, just from just from the standpoint like they compete they compete very hard you know they feed off of each other really well um you can see the prime example of the vancouver game you know where jeremy assisted christian you know 
But just from, just from what I've been seeing in training, like they're very hard workers, very competitive, and they don't take anything for granted. They don't take things lightly. You know what I mean? The way they the way they train is what is what you see in the game. You know, and it, it pays off. You know what I mean? That's why that's why San Jose in general is doing well in the league. You can kind of see that you know the team feeds uh, the the energy from those two feeds off to the rest of the team. So I just feel like. You know, just from the way they train with the the intensity, um, just shows me like, you know, the way you practice is the way you're gonna play. So which is doing really well for them. And we'll close with a final question from Alex Morgan. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for taking another follow up here. I I'm, I'm curious. You know, now you've been with the team for a a few weeks. What are some things that that you think the team can do to improve? going forward and, and add more goals to this offense because there was a, a stretch in the summer where there was some concern um you know about uh where the goals were coming from and, and you know uh, jeremy and christian had a lot of goals but you know not a ton of other players did so i'm curious you know obviously adding a few new pieces like like you and matthew is important but then the, tactically what are you guys looking for what do you think that that this team can add to, to continue to improve offensively um, I mean, from what I from what I've been from what I've heard from the, in the summertime, you know, with, with not scoring a lot of goals, there was a lot of guys that were out injured. There was a lot of guys that were that were with international duty. So like, and there was a lot of key players too. So like, um, like I don't want to say you can, you can give them the benefit of the doubt, but you know, the fact that they didn't have a lot of guys, there a lot of their main guys there, you know says a lot with this team that they're still able to hold um on games and but just in general i think we just need to be a little bit just more dangerous you know uh you know give teams respect but not too much respect and just be threatening from from our front from our front line i think it'll help us immensely um i just think that you know Runs out, runs in behind, runs off the ball. Third man combos, third man runs. I feel like we'll do really well for this team. I I don't think the issue is scoring goals because I know that from what I've been seeing, this team can score goals, you know. But I think just just the com the combinations of how we can attack to create chances for ourselves. I think that's that's where we. I don't want to say that's where we we can improve, but I think if we do that a little bit more, then scoring goals wouldn't be the issue. Thank you everyone for joining us. That concludes today's media availability.